These are our new valves, Supertech. These are the exhaust valves. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, valve lapping paste on there. You don't want too much. You don't want this stuff getting everywhere. You just need it right on that edge of the valve. That's probably good right there. Plunk that into the cylinder head. Fancy dancy valve tool, which is just a suction cup. Got a matte ring all the way around the outside of the valve. And then we got the same thing on the seat and the heads. Takes the gloss off, mates the surfaces together. And once you've lapped the valve into a location, it should stay in that location. So you got a little bit of brake cleaner here. That's it. got the brand new valve seals from Sea-Doo. So we're going to drop that on top of the valve stem. And I'm going to put just a little bit of grease. That's just to help it uh, go through the valve seal. You don't want to damage the valve seal pushing the valve through. Now that's in, we'll put the spring on. What I like to do is put a little bit of grease on it. And then drop that in like that. tap it a little bit just to make sure they're set. So that's one valve reinstalled and basically we're just going to carry on and do all 12. I've cleaned all the mating surfaces, uh, gasket scraper to make sure all the mating surfaces, all the materials removed, all the threads we've chased with a tap for reassembly and I've cleaned all the uh, bolts and assembly pieces on the uh, wire wheel. Okay, here we got the cylinder head. We got all the valves in place, new seals, all the keepers in place. See, we got all the new Supertech valves in there. Let's put a tiny smear of grease. Not much. Just a little bit on the journals. What we'll do is we'll gently put this thing back in the head. So you can see the uh, the divot in the cam. And then when we push that all the way in, that's where the locking pin goes in. Locking sleeve at the back of the cam. Next we'll put the uh, rocker shaft on. Okay, next step is we'll put uh, bolts in for the rocker shaft. Um, these are stretch bolts, not to be reused. I'm going to run the bolts in loose for now. I'm not going to tighten them down until the cylinder head is bolted onto the machine. No, uh, no gasket on the exhaust manifold. Just um, butts up to the head. We'll put that in place. Now we'll go and torque them all down. 89 inch pounds. I've already gone ahead and cleaned up the gasket surface with a gasket scraper and to make sure it's nice and clean some brake cleaner I've also gone ahead and uh, chased the threads make sure they're nice and clean and you can place it on these little uh, rotating pins here hold the cam chain up there we go so I usually like to put a, just a little bit of anti-seize under the washer head here we got a brand new uh, Sea-Doo head bolts. K 
Okay, a little finger tight. Before we torque all this down, I'm gonna get those two small bolts at the front of the head here. I put some grease on the head just to hold it. Uh, Loctite blue. Okay, the next step is to torque the head bolts down. Um, the manual shows 30 foot-pounds and then uh, 120 degrees angle and then another 90. I like doing it in stages. I'm going to go 15 foot-pounds and I'm going to go around to 30 and then we'll get the angle gauge out. Okay, now we're going to go back and do them all at 30. So here we have our angle gauge. So there's no torque here, you just crank on it until the needle swings around to 120. There. Okay, we've gone and done the uh, 15 foot pounds, 30 foot pounds. We've torqued them all now with 120 degrees. And then the final step is going to go in the same sequence and we're going to crank them all another 90. So now the head bolts are all torqued down. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to torque down those two little screws that we put in earlier before I forget. And those are 89 inch pounds again. Drop the cam locking pin in. Okay, these are torqued to uh, 14 and a half foot-pounds and then uh, 90 degrees. And, uh, torque the rocker shaft bolts down to uh, got 15 foot-pounds and now we're going to go uh, another 90 degrees. Yeah. There, there, that's good. We'll drop the rear uh, chain guide in and we'll put the uh, tensioner back in and we'll see how it all uh, lines up then. We put the guide back in, reinstall the tensioner. 1503 marks are pretty much level with the head. Camshaft sprocket bolts. It's 89 inch pounds. You can remove the cam lock and the crank lock. We'll reinstall the plugs and torque everything down. I'm going to use the supercharger nut again. And I'm going to use that just to turn the motor over. I want to see it go over a couple of times just to make sure nothing's binding, everything feels free. Okay, that's looking pretty good to me. Put some like Loctite on that. Yep. And for the cover, it's 53 inch pound. Eighty-nine inch pounds. Putting the top in, we got the spark plug tubes. I'm just going to pour a little bit over here just to uh, help lubricate when we start it up. If you're on a newer model, the uh, you could probably reuse the rubber gasket, but I decided to uh, replace it. Eighty-nine foot pound, inch pounds. We need a rear coolant hose. Let's get this main coolant line hooked up to the uh, fitting on the underneath, right underneath here on the manifold. Okay, so Chris has gone ahead and put on that uh, coolant line. Here we're going to use some fluid film. It's kind of a waxy, anti-corrosion.
connector here for the oil sensor. I'm going to plug that in before we get carried away with the manifold. Okay, we're going to torque it down now, 89 inch pounds according to the manual. Electrical connectors that we uh, disconnected to get the manifold off. Oil pressure switch. for the threads and hose at the top of the J pipe here. A little bit of anti-seas on the threads. Let's put these in and just snug them up a little bit. Put some uh, a little bit of grease or molly coat on there to now I'm just putting the coolant back in that came out. Visually make sure the oil level is still good. Yep. So now we'll go ahead and do the uh, negative terminal of the battery. Always positive first and then negative when putting it together. I'm going to crank it over a few times in drown mode. Do it once more and then we'll fire it up. Keep an eye on your coolant level for the first couple of rides.